Why, hello there. <laughs> oh, hello there. Can it Corey Apple? <laughs> anyway, um, went to the airport early this morning uh, with my family to pick up my son um, at the JetBlue terminal at JFK. He was coming back from uh, college. It's the first time I've seen him since he uh, enrolled at the uh, University of Washington at Seattle for his freshman year. Uh, so I haven't seen him in three months. He uh, bypassed the uh, Thanksgiving return home because he wanted to watch the Apple game, which was uh, Washington State versus Washington, which they won. So he wanted to have that experience. You know, it's a big rivalry game. Anyhow, as you guys saw from my past seven episodes, finally got this mother, this wonderful little tractor here running. We had probably three episodes of timing issues. It would not start no matter what happened. It was horrible. But all a learning experience. Yes, it's not exactly right. It, hi. Good. It's not exactly right because um, actually I had a lot of subscribers. And uh, by the way, um, thanks again one more time to uh, Zippo Varga. He corrected me. It's not Vargas. It's Varga. Actually, I knew it was Varga, but my autocorrect goes to Vargas because Vargas is such a common uh, last name. But anyway, thank you, uh, Zippo, for your help, man. I appreciate it. Um, it's not necessary for you to have to rip open that engine just to tell me because you know why? I think I know what the problem is. I had a couple of subscribers um, tell me that um, they saw a flywheel that looks like it's what I needed. Let me show you. I wanted to show you guys my spare flywheel as well as my spare um, crankshaft. So this is pretty interesting, okay? So, uh, as you guys saw, I basically lined up my magnet, right, to my magneto right over here. And I lined it up so that it was kind of like this. You know, the magnet was here, right? And that this part of the magnet was touching the trailing edge of this past. So it moves clockwise, right? And that the flywheel spins past the magneto right around here when the piston is at top dead center with the um, dots matched up between the crankshaft and the camshaft. So look, let me just point this to 12 o'clock noon, okay? Picture the clock is here, 12, 9, 6, 3, right? Look at the magnet, it's at 12 o'clock, okay? Look at the um, puller holes. These two holes are for flywheel pullers, you know, the contraption where you screw the two bolts in, you screw the middle one in and it pushes the crankshaft down and lifts this up to get the flywheel off of your crankshaft. That's a, These are puller holes, okay? They're designed for, for pullers. So look at the puller holes. This is at 6, this is at 12. Same direction as the magnet, okay? Look at the keyway here. See how the keyway is approximately at, I don't know, 2 o'clock, right? I've actually seen, if you pull up most the schematics for this engine, or what I believe this engine is, 31R707, 0033, 1G in the serial number, right? If you look at the schematics there, comes a flywheel that has a part number. That part number, when you search it, on eBay or Amazon or whatever is another flywheel that looks just like this except the keyway is not at 2 o'clock but rather 1 o'clock like that so I think that if I got that one it might work problem is there's only one available on eBay and it's $180 oh, you know me I don't spend $180 for nothing nothing but it's okay, don't worry about it. Um, what I have here works, and you know my other slogan or motto, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. This is the um, crankshaft for a 15 horsepower, 
it is identical to the one in here. Uh, there was a question from Zippo. Is the keyway the same place as the other one? And I wanted to tell you for confirmation that it's identical. So if this was in here, let's say, lined up like that, it would be like this. At top dead center. Hmm. Actually, actually, this is this is perfect. Because look, if this was where it was, I'm sorry, it's this way. Yes, we were looking at it from this side here, like that. Okay. This was on top, top dead center. When this is on top, this was on top. It was top dead center. This keyway was there. If I put the engine on, matching the keyway on the crank, got it lined up now. Magnet would be a top end center. Yep, it wouldn't match up. See, this would have been pointed way more than where the magnet was, exactly 45 degrees. Remember, my magnet was always 45 degrees. I had to move it like that to get it to 12 o'clock. And that was the problem, see? So basically, I think that the crankshaft is correct, but the flywheel isn't. There's like one type of flywheel out there where the key, the keyway, instead of at two o'clock, it's more pointed towards noon. It's around one o'clock. That's the one that I need. But I'm not spending $180 to get it. It runs right now, and it runs well. I know that yesterday, when I left off the video, it didn't seem like it ran well. But uh, the reason why was I just checked now, today, <laughs> and there was no gas. There was like gas was starting to sputter, which was the reason why it didn't sound like it was running well. Okay, but look, I'm gonna I'm gonna start this right now. And we'll see how it runs. Now that's idle. How about them apples, huh? From it not running at all to idling like that. I'm stoked. I'm gonna clean up the wiring a little bit. I thought I had to mess with the carburetor, but I adjusted the uh, air mixture screw as well as the idle screw a little bit. Now it purrs like kitten, like that. So I'm going to put the hood back on. And there's the deck. That's my next step. My next step is to get that deck going and fix that hole. 
So I've buttoned up the little wiring, and now I'm just going to go over the whole thing with a little bit of uh, water just to clean it up, you know, from the Earl, and then put the hood back on. I uh, just went over it with some water and a rag and uh, scraped off some uh, Earl, dried Earl on the uh, frame. Put the hood back on, uh, scraped off some stickers that I had on there, Looked yucky. Uh, wiped down the engine compartment, the gas tank, and look at that seat. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. The seat's probably the best condition of this tractor. Wheels hold air, transmission's good. Honestly, did you ever think that uh, I'd end up in this uh, <clears throat> situation right now? I was thinking that this thing was going to go to the scrap heap. But uh, it, it actually is in decent condition. Yeah, it's, it's old. It's uh, 1998, I think, 97. Uh, wheels hold air, like I said, and uh, there's actually no rust. There's no rot. Right around the foot area, you know, the foot pads, is usually rust all over the place. This thing was probably in a shed or garaged. It looks aight. So, I'm going to go and put some of the useless parts that I dragged out to try to fix this thing and uh, put it back in my shed and also go look for a piece of um, sheet metal. A piece of sheet metal that is thick enough gauge as compared to the deck as well as one that's bendable to get into that shape so I can weld that on and seal that hole. Then I'm going to check out the condition of the spindles, blades, and um, pulleys. So finally, I didn't think I would get to this point, but we're actually up to the deck now. And actually when I look at it from here, it looks pretty damn good. Uh, I'm going to use a um, couple of um, bungee cords and uh, hold on to that um, pulley there so that the brakes are lifted off of the pulleys so I can put it upright and spin the blades to see how the pulleys are. By the way, this is what my uh, telescopic boom mic goes on to. It, it would be useful if I had it on the phone. Today is actually a very warm day very surprisingly. Um, I'm just in a sweatshirt and my dirty windbreaker and uh, I'm sweating man. I had to turn on the fan. I think it's like 55 degrees today. Uh, sure it's a far cry from when I was in uh, bare chested and shorts and flip flops in the summer. I mean when it's hot here in New York it's hot. So anyway look. This is the lever that's on the bottom of the tractor that attaches to I believe a cotter pin goes in there. And when you engage the PTO lever, this goes back. When this goes back, these two brakes are released from the pulleys, and then you can spin them. Belt looks good. The pulleys look good. 
So I'm just gonna secure this to this so that it allows me to free flow. You know, it looks good though. When you let go, the brake stops it. So it's true, I, I really was giving up all hope for that engine. I, I really did, was just stumped, you know. I've never spent that much time on an engine before. Uh, I mean, unless I was rebuilding it. I mean, we might as well have, you know. It was, it's was it been taken apart like twice, you know. Three times, actually. No, wait. Yeah, twice. And by the way, uh, you guys noticed that uh, I didn't buy any gaskets. Uh, the gasket for the sump itself was damaged in some corners, right, some areas, but then when I put the RTV silicone right over it, it fills up that spot. I also did a small bead around the entire gasket as well as the sump cover as well. So once it was down there, and by the way, you guys also noticed that since I was such in a haste to put that sump cover back on, I merely just torqued it down with my impact wrench. I never took out the torque wrench and did 220 inch pounds converted to 18.3 foot pounds of torque on each uh, sump bolt been running this thing for at least an hour since I got it running there is no leaks <laughs> yet anyway so look we've got this compressed now right I have to fix this part here. Looks like somebody tried to JB weld it. Is that ridiculous or what? So it's a it's a good hole, and the hole is curved. You know what I mean? The, the hole is on this glue, um, bend here. So essentially, I need to get a plate at, and bend it to exactly that and maybe big enough to cover this hole here or even all the way up to here so when I was putting my parts back in the back my parts back in the back I looked through my uh, bin of parts and I have this piece of pretty good gauge um, sheet metal you can't even bend it you know slight, slightly but um, I'm going to use this because, you know what, <laughs> I don't know where this is from. You know, I never throw away anything, so, uh, ooh, that's interesting, but uh, it'll have to be bigger than that, so the bend is actually has to be this bend. See, this is, there's already a bend here, right, already made, so I'll just bang it so it's not so, you know, 90 degrees, it looks like this is like 45 degrees, you know what I mean? So I'll bend that and cut it like around here. I only need it to go like that, you know? So I'll, I'll cut it like here, like a backwards L. Yep, and up to this line here, up to this bend, we'll go up to here. There's a better look at it so you know exactly what I mean. So as you can see, the hole here, there, there, right? This entire area here is rusted, right? But there, it's on a bend. So I'm gonna unbend this a little bit so it mounts there, right? And if you want it to go to about here, right? And then have it go like that. You want it to go like this. And you want it to stop right around here. 
That's even too much. Um, then you want to do something like this. the condition of the blades and the spindles. So now we can spin it. It's pretty good. You can see the height of the blades. This one goes here. You'll go fast, otherwise you'll hurt your finger. And it's perfect. Touching and touching. There's nothing wrong with these blades. It's about the same. I'm going to put some penetrating oil on the areas and then grease them. I'm going to spray some penetrating oil just right around this area here, just so it penetrates. Yes, I realize me rotating it doesn't do anything because it's still in the same position. I'm going to do the other side as well. with the pulleys. It's already smoother. Now, I'm not going to use this. I was going to use some of this grease, but it doesn't do anything there unless you remove the spindle. I'm going to uh, cut this. Just hope I don't cut my uh, finger off.
we go. Not too bad. I mean, not too good, but not too bad. There's a little small area here. So it covers the hole, right? And actually it's cool because it has two holes here. You can actually fill those holes with um, beads. So this part here has to be flat and this has to be bended more. See, just bending it a little bit, starting to be better. I'm going to have to bang this part flat a little bit more. Let's check this out. Did some bending with some pliers, two pliers, and channel locks. Fits like a glove. Is that awesome? It's pretty good. And I don't really have any experience with metalwork. Well, I guess I do now. <laughs> yeah, that'll work, bro. Yeah, we just want to seal a hole. Or should I put this on the outside? What do you think about that? And the outside really looks yucky. I mean, you could really tell it's been fixed, you know? That fits better though. A couple of tacks there. Weld around it. Bet. And I love using my welder too.
it did a terrible job on the whole. But uh, it did such a terrible job. It looked so ugly that uh, I burned some extra holes in there. And so I had to uh, cover it up with some more um, flux. Right? And then I tried grinding it out to make it smooth, but it looked yucky. So I took some uh, JB Weld, coated it. So I'll sand that out when it dries and then paint over it with black. That ought to be all right. And also, while I had it out, I saw that this, uh, this is, I guess, is an anti-scalping device, you know, so that um, it kind of rolls on the grass. Anyway, this part over here was completely disconnected from the deck. So I used to use some uh, channel locks and pliers and banged it back so that they were both touching. And then once they touched, I welded them together so that at least they weren't, um, you know, apart. You know what I mean? This one came out a little better than my other one. Sorry. So yeah, I'm gonna wait until this dries. Uh, the um, actually now that I look at it, it doesn't look too bad. Doesn't look good, but doesn't look too bad. As long as I seal the hole, you know. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna go get some of that uh, 98 cent Home Depot black spray paint. And go over this thing, and then I'll uh, guess I'll. Uh, Put on my mower deck next. See you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. So as you see, I've JB welded this area. So now it doesn't look as yucky as it did before. I'm going to take some black paint and just go over it. And uh, so I've got this taken care of, I think. And uh, today I'm just going to uh, install this deck onto this uh, mower. Um, as you guys know, we just got through Thanksgiving, right? And uh, my wife was throwing away uh, this morning uh, her turkey baster. And I says, are you throwing that turkey baster away? She goes, yeah, I don't want it anymore. I'll buy another one next year. I says, but it looks like it's in perfect shape. She's like, well, I don't enjoy cooking dinner on Thanksgiving. I spent all day and it just, you eat it and I could half an hour and I waste it all day. I'm not doing it anymore. I'm buying one of the stop and shop packages. She doesn't really talk that way, but it's interesting that way. And so I said, You're throwing a perfectly good turkey baster out? She goes, yeah, why do you want that for? Well, you could use this to squeeze out, uh, to suck out some gas, you know, from certain areas. You know, it's useful. Don't throw anything away. You might use this someday. Anyway, so I'm going to paint that a little bit. So that's what it looks like there. Ding! And that's what it looks like now. I uh, ran out of my 98 cent uh, quick color um, black spray paint. I really should buy a few cans every time I go to Home Depot. But I didn't want to have to run out just to get, you know, a can of spray paint just to spray that. You know what I mean? It, this deck is, like, barely usable. You know what I mean? It's got holes in it. It's been welded, like, the entire middle has been welded, whatever. So I uh, was looking in my uh, box of spray paint. You know, I have a whole box of, like, used spray paint, whatever. And I found this water-based inflatable boat numbering paint with the brush in the cap. So, uh... I'm still like half a half a bottle. I figured, oh, you know what? It's for like water, you know, for a boat. It's not gonna come off, right? Even though it says it's water-based. Why do you use water-based paint for a inflatable boat? You know what I mean? Won't it come off? Anyway, I'm just uh, I just went over it. You know, it's better. Actually, it looks better than the rest of the thing. You know, but I'm gonna wipe down this thing a little bit to see if it's uh, super dirty. But anyway, that's it. Uh, after I let this dry a little bit, I'm going to find some uh, cotter pins and nuts and bolts and, and get ready to install this thing onto the tractor. I wanted to mention something else um, really quick and kind of interesting. Um, so I was looking through the uh, past couple of episodes. You know, I watch my own videos too, you know, just uh, 
get an insight on how I can make videos better and like, like for instance, I always chop my head off. I gotta learn to sit back a little bit more. Is that good? That doesn't seem natural though. Anyway, so I was looking through those videos, right? And uh, as you guys recall, when I was putting this thing together, I had that other crankshaft, the 15 horsepower crankshaft that was from my shed, whatever. Uh, it looked identical to the one in here, the 17.5. But then I was watching it carefully, right? And I was pausing the video and stuff. The top flywheel keyway on that crankshaft, it looked like it was more, you know, curved, like not curved, but, you know, angled at a, in a different spot, you know? It looked like the same spot that I need this to be, you know? So I think that if I put that crankshaft in here, right, it would be perfect. I think that would be it. So I think the crankshaft was wrong in this engine. That's what I think. The flywheel's fine. But uh, either way, as you guys saw, I drilled my own keyway in there and threw a nail in there, you know what I mean? And then I uh, put the bolt back on. So you know what? I have that other motto where if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? So it runs great, drives, hopefully it'll mow, and then this, can, this thing is done, you know? And it only took eight episodes. Well, we'll see if this thing runs, you know? Uh, I mean, the mower deck, see if it works. I get to all my comments because I'm just like that. Uh, some guy was saying, hey, Henry, I really like your boots. What kind are they? I says, well, first of all, you know that I hardly ever wear boots. The only time I wear boots is in the wintertime. But anyway, I got these from my dad. My dad passed away about five, six years ago, and uh, he hardly wore them. And my mom just says, you know what, take all this stuff. You can use it for wrenching in your garage so you don't get, a dirt, uh, so you don't get your good stuff dirty. And so, um, you know, it was cold, so I put these boots on. Um, you know, uh, I, I don't think there's... You know, because my dad lives in uh, Queens, New York City, and Flushing, Queens is a heavily Asian populated area. You can get like fake Crocs for a dollar. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure these boots were like five bucks. I mean, they're not Crocs, of course, but they're like Chinese, cheap Chinese boots, you know. They're not made out of leather or anything, they're pleather. But they're good for wrenching in the uh, garage on a cold day. They're called CRB, whatever. You're, you're never going to find these boots, okay, unless you come to Flushing, Queens. And you probably bought these like. Uh, 25 years ago or something like that. Whatever, it works. But uh, it's just that. Answer questions from the subscribers. I wiped down the deck a little bit with some water and uh, honestly, it looks okay. Uh, I'm gonna install it now.
how about that, fellas? Can you believe it? Can you believe it? I can't believe it. Absolutely fantastic. I didn't think that it would uh, it would be so smooth, you know? It took me eight episodes to get this Craftsman lawn tractor going. The majority of it, uh, probably six out of the eight episodes, was just getting the timing right on this engine and putting it all together, you know? But uh, got a lot of views for my channel and a lot of comments, which stirs up conversation and discussion amongst all us small engine nation members. And uh, listen, all of us small engine nation guys, we gotta stick together, you know what I mean? Because we have a group here where we all have similar interests. And uh, when we all get together, we can help each other out. And nothing can stop us from getting to where we need to go. Um, I just got an email a little while ago from a guy, Mike from Connecticut. He has a Toro wheel horse tractor that he got cheap. And then he was trying to figure out the carburation on a Kohler Command. And uh, what looked like to me was that the video that he sent me, it's about four minutes long. It showed a uh, Walboro carburetor, like for a Briggs, and it was on a Kohler Command. So he said that didn't run right. And that's one of the reasons why. He was also a little confused about how the the throttle uh, linkage and the assembly went on that carburetor. Well, if you got the wrong carburetor, that linkage is not going to go on there. But I sent him some information, a couple of video links, and uh, links to a bunch of pictures and charts and diagrams on how that Kohler uh, command carburetor would go on there. You would first need to get a Kohler command carburetor, you know what I mean? But uh, Mike from Connecticut, if you're watching, uh, if the stuff that I sent you is... Uh, helps you fix the problem, uh, that's great. If not, uh, and you're still boggled, I'll try to help you. If I can't help you, I'll post your video, and my buddies over here, my subscribers, and all the expert out there uh, will be able to help you out. But uh, I'm pretty sure that once you get a Kohler Command carburetor on there, you'll be good to go. Um, I got my cars blocked in the driveway here, and uh, my next step is to do what? That's right, here at Mowers and Blowers, right? We push tractors in, but they come out driving. Honestly, I didn't think that this one was going to be driving out. You know, I thought maybe I might have to push this out. But, you know, if anything, I would have just left this carcass back here. And uh, when I found an extra engine, I would put it on just so I would adhere to my slogan. We drive them out. You know what I mean? Uh, that's actually a new slogan. I don't even know if I really like it so much. But you guys get the picture, right? Uh, they come into the garage not running. They'll come out of the garage running. And that's my entire point, you know. Uh, Again, I'm not a mechanic. I play one on TV, though. <laughs> but uh, I'm really a flipper, you know? I got this for a tr through a trade, but essentially, you know, it's just getting equipment without spending any money, you know? Which I haven't spent almost anything this year except for just parts to get this stuff going, you know? And, and even then, I, I'm like a tight wad, you know? I'm being, what, what, what would you, how, how much is it? You, you take pennies? Because I got a lot of pennies. You want pennies? Um... Look, that's my philosophy. Uh, if you're cheap, you can have people call you cheap, whatever, right? But at the end of the day, you spent way less money to get something running than the next guy, right? And in turn, you save that money. You got a big wad of money somewhere, you know what I mean? And then for a rainy day or if you want something, you can get it because you have the money saved up. You didn't go and splurge or waste the money on stuff that you really didn't need, you know? And... Uh, Buying parts throughout years, well, people really don't search for the cheapest part, right? They may pay two, three, five, ten dollars $10 more than maybe what I pay. Well, think about the, the five, ten, fifteen, twenty dollars $10, $20 that maybe somebody else paid for hundreds of parts throughout several years, right? I probably have about five or ten grand more than you do now just from that, you know? So with that five or ten grand, that can go a long way. Pave your driveway fix your heating system, uh, new windows for your house, things that you can do for home improvement and for your own lifestyle. You know, you follow what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, that's the logic that I have about it. That's my philosophy about, you know, you can call me cheap all you want, but at the end of the day, I guarantee you, I paid less than you did. You know what I mean? So uh, try to follow that, guys. If you don't really need something, don't buy it. 
unless you really need it. You know what I mean? And when you really need something, search around. I guarantee you, you're going to find a, a lower price somewhere else. You know? Uh, for you guys out there searching for parts, I'm a pretty good parts searcher, with the exception of maybe this project. <laughs> uh, I, I actually did end up finding the right flywheel, but dude wants like $180 for it. I don't think I've ever paid $180 for anything, any of the stuff that I have in my 800 videos on my YouTube channel, you know? But uh, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. This thing starts, runs, runs pretty well, and mows and drives. And there's almost no rust on this thing. You know, so you know what? I mean, uh, I might list this in the spring for like uh, 350 you know? Some nut in the spring is going to want it. And of course, I'm going to tell him when I get here, I says, it's not the original engine. Well, maybe it is. I'm not sure. No, it's not the original engine, you know. But uh, it works, you know. So if you uh, want it, you can try it, drive it, mow, whatever, right? And everything is sold as is. You can play with it all you want. And if you're satisfied, you can have it. But I'm not Lowe's or Home Depot. So if you want a warranty or if something breaks and stuff like that, not my responsibility. I just have the equipment. If you want it, you can buy it. If you don't want it, have a nice day and thanks for coming. That's my logic behind flipping. You know what I mean? Uh, unfortunately, though, you know, when I sell lawn tractors, you have to have the customer come to your house. But for snow blowers, push mowers, and things that could fit in my van and I could easily just load it up, I usually meet them in a public area, you know? So that way, they don't know where you live, right? In case something bad happens, you know? But you always give them that disclaimer. I'm not Lowe's or Home Depot. I'm just a dude that has the equipment. If you want it, you can buy it, you know, at this price. That's my rant of the day. Um, first football game's about to start. If my wife leaves and I can move my car out of the way, I'm going to drive this out and park it into the uh, backyard. If not, it'll be on the next episode. I'll see you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. Hey guys, support my channel, buy a sticker. Also, follow me on Instagram, at Mowers Blowers. Check out my website, MowersBlowers.com. See you guys on the next part. Have a great day. Hey Henry, it's Andy from the UK, aka Mower Wizard. See you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers.